As far as driving games go, Road Trip Adventure, sometimes simply known as Road Trip, is a little bit different to what you'd typically expect from a car game, a driving game, a racing game. Most racing games don't really have much of a story. They tend to center around the idea of progressing through a linear career mode, unlocking new cars, buying new cars, tuning those cars, and of course improving your skill, and ultimately completing every race in the game, basically. Most racing games work around that basic, simple style, and it works. That's the reason why people play those games, that's why games like Gran Turismo and Forza are so popular. Then you have some other driving games which are a little bit different. They may be more mission-based or story-based. That would be games like Driver or Runabout, that kind of thing. Grand Theft Auto, of course, although that isn't as much of a driving game as just an open-world game which happens to also include cars. Now, as far as driving games go, Road Trip Adventure, as I said, is a pretty unique one. It's a game which almost doesn't need to have cars involved. It has cars involved and therefore is a driving game, but to be honest, the game feels almost as though there don't really need to be cars in there. You could just as easily make Road Trip Adventure with characters rather than cars, because that's exactly what the cars in this game are. The cars are not driven by people, the cars have their own personalities, in a similar way to things like Cars, the film but a lot better than that, I would say. Now, initially, the visual aesthetic of Road Trip Adventure could put some people off. When I first played the game, it did put me off. I didn't expect to like the game, I thought it looked very childish, but I was happily surprised, because that's a very deliberate choice that the makers of the game made. It's based around that penny racer style of vehicle where the car is essentially a real vehicle, but all of its dimensions are squashed up into a very small, almost toy car or remote control car kind of appearance. And actually that visual style, combined with the very bright colours and simple animation style of the game, certainly compared to many other driving games, I would say actually helps Road Trip Adventure to be kind of visually timeless. The game doesn't really feel dated because it doesn't really have a date. It doesn't come from a particular era. The game could just as easily be from the 80s as from the 2000s. And that's great because it means that the game ages very well. You can go back to the game years later and still have just as much fun with it. The game does not age in that traditional way that something like an older Gran Turismo or an older Toka game or an older Forza game would. Not that they're bad, but they definitely feel their age at a certain point. Now, as far as actual gameplay, the game is obviously not based around realistic physics or realistic graphics or realism in any way. It's more about developing relationships, developing business relationships, developing beneficial friendships with other characters who are also, of course, other vehicles in the game. And that probably sounds pretty lame if you haven't played it, but the way that that's integrated into the game is actually really cool. You use those friendships with businesses, characters, etc. to earn cash, to unlock special abilities and special parts for your vehicle. You can buy alternate bodies for the car, some of which you'll have seen in this video. Now, as far as the performance, the physics of the vehicles, we already covered the fact that it's not supposed to be realistic. But as far as the physics go, the handling is quite nice to work with. Of course it's not realistic, it's not even trying to be, but it's a pleasure to work with, the cars are fun to drive, and the physics are, though not realistic, consistent. They are consistent across the board, the cars don't suddenly act in a strange way, it's consistent all across the game. It's relatively easy to get a hang of, which of course makes it better for beginners, younger players, people who don't necessarily want to get into a full-on racing game, they just want a bit of fun, something a bit different. And you don't really need to be a fan of cars or even racing specifically to enjoy the game. If you are a car fan, you will certainly notice things in the game which are kind of like fan service, such as some of the vehicle bodies which you can use, which are cars which you wouldn't expect to be in this game, stuff like the Mazda 787B body, which you can see that I'm using. As far as the open world aspect of the game goes, we already touched on the fact that you create relationships with different companies, etc. And some of the aspects of 
not necessarily the realism of the game, but just the way the game works, are actually refreshingly different to traditional racing games. For instance, you can do things like get paid for having a sponsored logo on your car and driving a certain distance with it. You get paid based on the distance that you drive with that sign on the car. That's cool. Many racing games could integrate something like that, but haven't. This one did. Then you've got stuff like the fact that you can run out of fuel, and the more upgrades you fit to the car, the quicker you run out of fuel, just like you would with a real vehicle. Plus you can get upgrades to the car which allow it to do, of course, unrealistic things, but very fun things. Stuff like the monster truck tyres which you can see on my vehicle, the optional rear wing which can allow the car to glide for much longer than it would if you just drove the car off a cliff without the wing. You can also fit jets to the back of the car to increase the performance and also to make the car fly further, to make the car raise to the top of the ocean and shoot along the top rather than driving along the ocean floor. Stuff like that. And all of these little upgrades and mods that you can do to the car all improve the overall experience of the game. It allows you to go back and win things that you couldn't before, unlock parts that you couldn't before, even reach certain areas of the map that without those parts you cannot reach. Stuff like mountains, for instance, or caves that are hidden and you can't get to without those certain upgrades. So it's a very big open world to work in. You can teleport to different places. There are about seven or eight different distinct parts of the open world, if I remember correctly. I believe it's about seven or eight and they range from ice and snow to dirt to desert, etc. So, put simply, overall, I would say that Road Trip Adventure, or Road Trip as it's sometimes called, is a car game or a driving game for people who don't necessarily need to have all of their racing games based on being as realistic as possible. If you fancy trying something different that happens to still be about driving and about cars and have those involved in the game, but at the same time, totally different to any other driving game on the market, then this is a pretty decent one to go for. Plus, there's a relatively simple story in the game as well about a world championship with the opportunity to win the championship and become the president of the whole world, which is cute and kind of fun as well. So overall, if you fancy trying something different, as I said, I would definitely recommend checking out Road Trip Adventure. It's one of my personal favourite oddball driving games, and it's certainly worth a look. So click through to the playlist at the end of this video to see more game reviews and of course subscribe down below for more like this in the future. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.